heavy box. It's yours. Maybe get a drink, please, teacher. Let's set up this table first, Rambi. Well, okay. It's a nice day, but I'm still glad we found this nice shady spot. Would you like to play a game after lunch? What kind of game, teacher? The measuring game. the number of cars in the parking lot. That's a silly idea, Sherman. I'm not walking back to the car park now. How about we just count the swings instead? Oh, I already did that when I was picking flowers up. There are four swings, three seesaws, and three monkey bars. That's good work, Anne. Perhaps you should try something slightly more challenging. How about counting how many burps starting from right now? Burp! Ew, Ravi, you're disgusting! <laughs> yes, Ravi, please speak it yourself. Sorry, guys. I know something we can measure. What about how long this table is? This table? But how, teacher? We don't have any measuring tapes or rulers. Yeah, how are we going to do that? We will just have to be creative. I'm going to split you all into two teams to figure out the problem. Shamin and Pinas, you are team A. Which means Ravi and I are in Team B. That's right. You may use anything to find the part to calculate your answer. And the game starts now. Yay! Hmm. Now let me see what we can use to measure. Hmm, something long and straight like a ruler. Aha, uh -huh, what about this? It's long and straight and may act as a ruler. Hey, that's a great idea. We'll just keep adding it up as we go along. Okay, let's try from this end of the table. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the answer then. This table is seven straws long. Or we could say that this table is the length of seven straws. Let's go give teacher the answer. What do we have that looks like a ruler? Teacher said we should be creative. Maybe we shouldn't think of a ruler. But any other tools we probably wouldn't think of. I know, let's use our arm to measure. Maybe we can use your entire body. This table looks like it's just about your height. Really? Yes. It's exactly your height. How tall are you? I am 1.4 meters tall, which means the table is 1.4 meters long. Let's go find the others and see if they have the same answer. Okay, Team A, would you like to start first? How did you get your answer? Well, I was thinking about what was long mm -hmm. and resemble a ruler and could act as a measuring instrument. Then I said, why don't we use straws? Because straws are long and straight and may act as a ruler. So how many straws make one length of the table? Seven. The table is seven straws long. Wonderful. So, if we know how long each straw is, then we can multiply that by 7 for an exact amount. We place one straw starting from one end of the table. That's number one. 
Finas made a mark with finger because we didn't have that many straws to use. From the mark, we placed the straw again, number 2. Finas marked it again and we continued to 3. Four, five, six, and seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This table is 7 straws long. Let's measure the straw. The straw is 20 cm long. So how long is the table? The length of the table is 7 multiplied by 20 cm which equals to 140 cm. Hmm. What about your team, B? What is your answer? The table is 1.4 meters long. Very good. How did you get the exact answer without measuring tape? We use Ravi. Ravi? Ravi lay down and measured that it was exactly Ravi's height. Since Ravi is 1.4 meters tall, the table must be 1.4 meters long as well. Since 1 meter equals to 100 centimeters, 1.4 meter equals to 1.4 times 100 centimeters equals to 140 centimeters. Very good children, you have all got the right answers. As you can see, there are many ways to measure even though you don't have proper measuring tools. As long as you're creative, anything's possible. Let's take a break and have some refreshing lemonade. Would you like to play another measuring game later? Yes, please! Let's try something harder this time. Yeah, let's, let's try, try something, something harder. Okay, if that's the case, I won't split you into teams this time, but I will make the problem more challenging. Can you see the monkey bar over there? Yes, yes I can see the monkey, monkey bar. bar over there. Good. Why don't we measure how high it is? Come on, guys, let's go over there. Come on, guys. Challenging. Maybe I should measure with my height again. But it's not possible to lie down nor stretch unless you could float or fly. There must be something we can use. I'm getting a little hot over here. Me too. I wonder if it's a true question. It just doesn't seem possible. This is long. Come on, let's go. A 
Okay, we know we can use the rope, but how do we use the rope? We'll throw it at the top, and then we pull it at the other end of the handle. I can hold up my arm to make where that is. Then we'll measure it from the mud to the ground. We have the rope, and... length of the rope plus the half we measured just now. This monkey bar is one tenth length of this rope. If we know how long the rope is, then we'll know how tall the monkey bar is. Come on, let's go find teacher. Teacher! 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 Hi guys! You found the answer so quickly. That's great! So, what is it? And would you like to start first? We found this answer by using this rope. I'm so glad I brought it with me. Or else Ravi will have to fly. <laughs> we hooked the rope and measured half from the top. Then I used my finger to mark the point where we pulled the ends even. After that, we pulled down the rope and measured from the point to the ground. The height of the monkey bar is half times the length of the skipping rope. To measure the skipping rope, we will need to use a measuring tape. This skipping rope is 2 meters long. Good work children. You have all learned something valuable from the previous game. We may not necessarily need rulers or measuring tools to measure. We can improvise in the absence of such tools. And it is also a good way to learn creativity. Can anyone tell me what else you have learned? To bring more snacks to a picnic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Ravi. You can be in charge of the food next time. The other important lesson here is the definition of length. Length is the measurement between two points. And every object has its own length. Given the right tools, any object can be measured. A picnic table may be long or short. A monkey bar may be tall or short. However, if you are using far or near to define a certain length, then distance is a more appropriate word. Short, tall, long, far or near are words to describe length. And these words are used when we want to compare between two objects. Like I'm shorter than Ravi. Or oh, my house is nearer to Kimberly's than my friend is to Anna's. Which is the distant comparison between two houses? In our previous games, we learned that it is possible to improvise tools to measure. Improvising is a form of creativity, but Proper measuring tools like rulers or measuring tapes will provide us with the most accurate answer. All measuring tools follow measurement system called metric system. This system is international, which means everyone in the world uses the same measuring system or metric system. Which means my friend Mohammed, who lives in Ipo will know how tall I am if I tell him I'm 1.4 meters tall. That's right. Meter is a metric length. But it is not just your friend from Ipoh, but everyone around the world as the metric system is international. Some common metric lengths or distance are millimeter, centimeter, meter, and kilometer. Let me give you some examples of metric equivalents. 10 millimeters is the same as 1 centimeter. 100 centimeters equals 1 meter. Does anyone know how many meters equals to 1 kilometer? 
Oh, I know. 1,000 meters equals to 1 kilometer. I know because you kept multiplying by 10. I figured the next answer would be multiplied by 10. Good thinking, Pinas. That's absolutely right. You will probably relate to this metric length and distance in everyday life. For example, let's say if you were to drive to Ipoh to visit your friend, would you know how long it takes to drive there? Last year when my family visited Ipoh, my dad told me that Ipoh is about 240 kilometers from KL. We left KL at 9 a.m. and we reached there about 11.30 a.m., which is about two and a half hours. I know my dad was driving about 110 km per hour because my mom kept telling him to slow down. But if we didn't drive there ourselves, how will we know how long it takes to drive to Ipoh? Well children, what can only count an approximate answer because we have to take traffic conditions and toilet breaks into consideration. But it took Ravi two and a half hours to reach Ipoh. That's because I got hungry many times and we had to stop for food at least twice, I think. Teacher, can we do this again next time? Of course we can. Since you all worked so hard, I'm going to get us some ice cream. Yay! Yay!